Hey guys, Cardo970 again. This time a review of the C set of the high grade customized campaign. This includes the beam rifle and a joint set that seems to focus mainly on Shars Counterattack and Gundam Unicorn. Let's immediately have a look at the beam rifle. The first thing I have to say is it looks a lot more like uh, something of a modern day carabine rather than a beam rifle. It's a bit on the boxy rectangular side, but overall it's still nicely detailed. I really like the scope and that actually seems, the scope itself seems to be much more detailed than the rifle itself, but overall it's a very nice thing. One uh, little thing that kind of sets it apart from the other weapons from these joint sets is that it doesn't have a hole like almost all of the others do to connect it to either other parts of the action sets or to um, attach them to each other to form a kind of double weapon. So I guess it's also a good thing because it would have looked a bit weird just having a random hole in there, but keep that in mind. And now let's see what this thing is compatible with because the good thing is it doesn't have a trigger guard. So even suits that do not come with trigger fingers should be able to hold this pretty easily. Or can they? First of all, we have the standard Federation hands and the trigger finger hand is absolutely perfect. The beam saber holding hand, on the other hand, not the greatest. Can't really hold on to it. You can kind of jam it in there like that. So you can make it work, but standard, it's only gonna work with the trigger finger hand for the modern standard Earth Federation hands. Same story with the older style hands. The trigger finger hand once again works like a charm. It's in there perfectly, but the normal holding hands has kind of a catch to it. Unlike the modern day hands, it can actually hold on to it perfectly, but the shape of the stock gets in the way here because for some reason, the stock here goes downwards and that collides with the arm. So the problem here is the shape of the arm. These hands actually work perfectly, but it's just the arm here that gets in the way. Or um, I guess I mean, we should really say that the stock here gets in the way. So that's really unfortunate. And when you push it upwards a bit more, it will get somewhat more loose but you can still put it like this and then it's still gonna be okay. But the way you'd really wanna put it is a bit more up there like this and then it's not gonna work. So you can make it work. If this looks good enough, then it will work. This is like the maximum you can put it on. So that's a bit of a problem. This is gonna run into that annoying stock. So depending on your mobile suit, the hands might, might work just fine but your arms might get a bit in the way depending on the way they're shaped or like which side you're really holding them onto. And this beam rifle will unfortunately remind the Zakus that they're just not made to carry beam rifles. You can sometimes get it to hold on to it with a bit of luck and you might just find that sweet spot as you see. Ah, there we go. So you can kind of try to find it, but it's not going to be easy and the slightest touch will send it flying everywhere. The holding hand here fares actually significantly better than the trigger finger hand, unlike the Earth Federation suits. It's still a bit on the loose side, but it will largely work. So even though they're not built for beam weapons, the modern day Zaku hands will actually be able to somewhat hold on to these. And believe it or not, but the older style Zaku hands actually fare significantly better. The closed fist hands are almost perfect, just a bit side wiggling, just have to lock it in place uh, with the arm. So that's almost perfect. And then the trigger finger hand, just like the holding hand, just a bit of side to side, which can kind of be corrected with the arm. So those older style hands actually work pretty damn good with this carabine, or as I should say, the beam rifle. And once again, would all depend a bit on the shape of the arm. And Zaku here is actually pretty well made for this because the arm goes from thin, where the carabine stock is thick, to thick, 
where the carabine has well where the beam rifle has already ended so like i said you should it's not just the hands you have to look for but it's the entire hand plus the shape of the arm kind of and we have even more evidence of that unfortunately with the strike the all gun and project hands work perfectly with the beam rifle it's super solid in there but the arm just gets in the way and when you push it up it gets floppy so then you will have to kind of jam it on the arm kind of fiddle with it a bit eventually it will work but it will look a bit off because hey your hand here is underneath the trigger so it works it just looks slightly off and with the Gundam seed hands we reach about the same conclusion once again, to have the gun in a normal firing pose, you will have to elevate it just a bit so that the trigger is above the trigger finger. The good news here is that even when it's up a bit like this, the gun is still in there very, very securely. So if you want to give your Gunham Seed model some extra guns, this is definitely the way to go. And next up are the joint parts. The first one we're getting here is the same one we got in the A and B set. The connector to connect a body like the new Gundam or the double Zeta Gundam to the standard tie peg on the legs. For example, on the Kshatriya or the Jim Custom here. And this is a type used by Muslims, so you simply put this on here. And then we put that on there. And it doesn't look as bad as I was expecting. Still very chunky in the chest, but hey, it works. Also, this connector should work for the all Gundam project guys, provided that you can get that ball joint out of there. It's not gonna be easy, but if you can get it out there, one way or another, you can put it on there. Then moving on, next up we have the backpacks and even some Strager pack fun. The first thing I unfortunately cannot demonstrate because I don't have a new Gundam and I don't have a Rigazi either. But this adapter here will connect to mobile suits with two pegs in their bag, which are 1.8 millimeters apart measured from the insides and then with pegs that are two millimeters in diameter. Moving on to the striker pack, we're using the same thing, we're just flipping it around, make sure the pegs are down, you grab this, put this in there, then that goes in there, and then this will connect to the strike, and I wouldn't recommend pushing this in too hard, because this is going to be very difficult to remove. I'm not sure if the camera's picking up the stress marks on here, but that's because I had to remove it with a tweet with a pair of tweezers and I had to push them really really hard so if you can find some other fun things that go on here then definitely leave a comment down below and increase the striker pack potential even further but for now we're just gonna hook it up with the Byerland's custom backpack and it makes the strike unsurprisingly very back heavy because it's not nearly as flush as I was hoping it to be. Also getting him to stand seems to be nearly impossible because this is only barely making it and when I move up the shield you'll... Let's try that again. Come on, you can see that you're probably gonna want to use a stand when you put them like this this isn't really working out as well as expected i would say this probably sounded like a great idea on paper but the execution is just a bit off also you're having a seemingly giant booster attached by a very small connector so this is kind of unfortunate, so you're absolutely going to have to use a stand with that. And no way is a strike going to be able to stand like that while this is on there. However, on the next page, we might be able to fix that. Because when we turn it around, we see that we're also getting 
C5 here, which is a part we've also seen in the A set, and this will allow us to connect the Byron's arms to the strike or any other machine that uses those uh, ball jointed arms. Well, um, the ball joints on the shoulder joint which goes into the body. So we're simply going to rip off our strike's arms and I will warn you about one thing and it seems like at least on my gym sniper they kind of stretched the joints but on here it seems to be rather loose so there seems to be some kind of weird thing going on where not all of those ball joints are the same size it seems because literally after I had them on my gym sniper K9 the arms weren't as strong anymore but yeah that's just a warning and there we go so that was just a quick warning um, if you're planning on using that so just keep that in mind and down he goes whatever he's fine like that they were just gonna have to cannibalize the poor violent a bit more rip of the arms there we go put them on there once again this is one of those things that probably sounded like a genius idea on paper but once they went ahead and did it the geniusness was suddenly gone and the genius was kind of dripping down and this thing is starting to fall apart unlike the real violent yeah i have to say this was a great idea on paper he's now perfectly balanced but his his composure isn't as good anymore and you're gonna have to use a lot of super glue for that because this doesn't want to stay up in any way shape or form and to be honest that's not really a surprise hey maybe we can do something like this i'm not sure but well it's becoming something with ridiculously large arms and a lot of thrust power yeah i guess that'll just have to Actually, that's probably one of the best ways to put this. Yeah, I'm just gonna um, let this be by saying it sounded great on paper, but not so good in real life, where we have something known as gravity, which tends to not be as kind to these giant parts. And the final thing I should of course mention is that these pegs will also allow you to connect them to standard arms such as the Mark II's arms because they use the same kind of connector. So you don't have to use those parts to connect them to the ridiculous giant violent arms. On the flip side that also means that you can connect these arms to the Mark II. Something for the Titan fans to consider. The final backpack thing you can do is take any of the unicorns and then you can attach it with the Rezels backpack or we can once again use the Byron Customs backpack because here they do use different pegs. The uh, middle ones are for the Byron Custom and then the outer ones are for the Rezel. So we simply put this on there once again we grab the same piece but this time we put it on sideways there we go shove that in and then it will connect to the unicorn once again the same thing as with the strike it's a bit far to the back it doesn't look as bad looking at it from the front but when you look at it from the back and keep in mind it's gonna be the same way with the Rezels backpack and probably even worse because that thing because that thing is a lot more massive and just look at how much problems it has already trying to hold up this backpack just imagine throwing a bunch of other uh, stuff on there so yeah it seems like the striker pack on here sounded good on paper but not as good in reality talking about that how do you like this unicorn 
Actually, from the front, it doesn't look that off. But when we look at it from the back, yeah, it's just too far removed from the main body. And come on, try to keep your compo... Well, forget about it. And then we actually get two of those um, backpack connector thingies. And these are almost identical to the ones we got in the B set. They just have the little extra piece here that will connect it to the unicorn's backpack. So these are gonna function exactly the same. You can put them on your normal mobile suit, uh, well, your mobile suit with normal arm connectors, and then you can attach um, the ones with the thick pegs sticking out of them. And I figured, well, I've cannibalized the Byerland enough here, so let's slide this on here. Well, I'll just do it the other way around then. There we go. Come on, you know you want those extra arms. You want some arms back. Put it like this. So apparently, you can also turn it around for machines that have more unique arms, the more you know. And then we'll bring in something with also massive arms, the Q-Blade once again. Just hey, it's starting to get tradition that we test out these arms with the q -Blades. We put those in. And there we go. Actually, the Byron looks really funny with those short arms. We're just used to seeing like the Byron with those massive arms. And now it's like, oh, teeny tiny arms. Ain't he cute? And looks like I'll have to clarify one quick thing here. Apparently, this is actually double purpose. Because when you put it the other way around, this hole here will fit the standard peg arms, but this hole here is actually meant for bigger ones, something I didn't pick up when testing it out on the Byerland here, because I wanted to do that for comedic purposes, but for functional purposes, it looks like we discovered an extra um, hole that can be used. So this one is for the normal ones, this one is for the bigger ones, such as the Kshatriya and other ones which also use this one. Though I can't think of any on the top of my head. Once again, if you know any others that use this kind of um, unique peg, leave a comment down below. I'll put up an annotation somewhere around here. You'll find them if you have your annotations on. Finally, we're getting some leg parts and unfortunately, they're not gonna be nearly as useful as you might think. The big problem here is that it uses the new Gundam's ball joints and also the polycaps you got with the new Gundam. You might think, well, what's the problem with that? Well, the new Gundam and all the other Shars counterattack molecules that I know of use a different kind of polycaps which means that they also have ball joints that are ever so slightly different from, oh, I don't know, 90% of all the other uh, 144 scale high grades out there. And, well, just for reference, the Shards counterattack ones use polycap runners with numbers instead of the usual letters. So, and when I say that they won't fit on the other models, I don't mean they're gonna be a bit loose or something. They just go on there and do absolutely nothing. They'll just fall out and be completely pointless. And even the super glue trick isn't gonna work here unless you put on literally like 100 coats. So that's the first kind of bummer, but then, uh, when we look at the other things, we get two different kinds of connectors. First of all, we get the thick connectors, which, according to the manual, will allow you to connect them to the Kshatriya's legs, and as far as I know, that's once again all they're gonna do. They will attach to the Kshatriya, because almost all of the other model kits that use the thin kind of connector, being the one that is currently stuck in his leg here. Uh, well, this was the one that is used 
for the strike attachment uh, to make the striker pack. So that is the one that is used by almost all of the models that I know of other than the Kshatriya there. And those, in and those include Silver Bullet and Dovin Wolf lines. Uh, we have the Double Zeta Gundam. Um, and all of the Gundam Thunderbolt kits. And those are about all of them that I can think of. So it's a very select amount of legs that you can mount on a very select amount of mobile suits. And of course also the Rose and Zulu's legs will work. So then once we have a compatible mobile suit, the Shark Jagan here, you can click him on there. And well, it works, but the problem is it's depending on the skirt armor on, on, and on how revealing it is, you know, the legs, the upper legs might look a bit funny because it's kind of like a skeleton. It's like just the inner frame showing like there should be something there, but there isn't. So it works, but it doesn't always look as good, especially depending on the skirt armor. So it's once again something that probably sounded great on paper, but didn't turn out quite as awesome as it was in real life. Also, why did they have to use the ball joints of the new Gundam and want to just use the standard runners, uh, the standard polycap joints as an example, then it would have fit on the Gundam Seed models, almost all of the High Return of the Century ones, the Gundam the Blow ones, because they also use the same ones as far as I know. It would have been so much more useful, but now it's just this very niche amount of model kits, uh, those very niche mobile suits that you can connect with each other. So that is kind of a bummer. So that's all you're getting, and now it's time for some final thoughts on this free set. So it feels like it's kind of been watered down in a sense that they throw in a lot of different stuff. You get a waist connector, you get some arm connectors, you get some leg connectors, you get a weapon, you get a striker pack. But in the end, you're much better off getting a more specialized set. For example, if you want some uh, good arm connectors, you're much better off going for either the A set or the B set. And if you want some good waist connectors, you're much better off get, uh, going for the B set because that thing has like much more of, of, of a variety. And like I said, um, that set will connect pretty much any body to any legs. Here you just get that one piece. Same goes for the armor connectors. You get that one piece. Um, then the legs, well, they kind of work, but then kind of don't work. Same goes for the striker pack. It sounded like a good idea on paper, but then when you really look at it, you realize it kind of falls flat on its face, because when you look at it from the side, it's all kinds of wrong. So really, either it doesn't really work, like the leg connectors or the striker pack slash backpack for other mobile suits, or you're better off going for another set that is provided that they will ever become available in retail, that is. Um, but yeah, I didn't, at first this looked like a cool set, had some really cool ideas, as I've said a million times, they sounded cool when I read the manual, but then when I built them, things literally fell apart. So you either have the things that don't really work, or you have the things that you're much better off buying other sets. So unless you really, really like that beam rifle, which is always a possibility because it is, granted, a very nice looking beam rifle, slash beam carabine, slash normal carabine, whatever you want it to be, it's very nicely detailed, love, love, love the scope, it has really gorgeous detail, um, especially provided how kind of plain and boxy the rest of the rifle. It's like, here's a cardboard rifle with a real sniper scope on it. So yeah, that's all for this set. And as I said a million times already as well in this video, if you still have any ideas, remarks like, hey, that thing will fit on that, leave a comment down below. I'll put an annotation link with your name and what you said in there. 
at the appropriate part. That's all for this review and see you guys next time.